Good morning. Step one, go turn the gas on. Step two, get a marganetta going. Step three, have a look at that. Uh, good morning day. What day is it? Tuesday. Day three, Tasmania. Oh. Today we're going to, wouldn't have a clue what it's called. I'm not the best tourist guide. I have everything in my head on wiki camps in my route, but I don't know the names yet. I don't really remember the names of places until I've been there. And like, whoa, yeah, I remember that place. That was called this. So we're going to look at, I think it's called like World's End. It's like the furthest point before Antarctica. Um, and then we're going to a river inlet. And I've had a guy message me who's local saying I can fish in the ocean without a license. So I might get some fishing done today. I'm just sitting down editing the next video. We're gonna start doing a bit of daily vlogs and stuff. So just to get back on track, get back in the flow. Alicia just made the coffees. Trying to be, before we left, we were very healthy, like keto, carnivore, just like very conscious about what we eat and what we drink. Um, now that we're traveling, it's a little bit different. We're still the same. Well, I'm trying to be the same. Cause I refuse to be a hypocrite. And you all, for those of you who actually follow me on social media, you know I'm very, very aware of what's going on in the world, our diet, what's in our water. Um, so I'm trying to be conscious of that on the road too. But also, but also save, money save money. So like, yeah, God, Thomas Foods ain't next to my house anymore. So I can't be spending like 20 bucks a day on meat. But we're doing so much more exercise. I had to be weighed the other day before going on the helicopter. I left, so at my fattest, I was 88 kilo. I somehow got down to um, 83. I was stuck at 83, 84 for like a year or two. And then I changed everything and my back was still fucked. Changed everything to try heal my back. So I went carnivore, keto. Um, my back slowly come good after fucking like five, four, five years. Like, if you want to heal inflammation and injuries, change what you eat. And then went back to gym before I left, boxing and lifting weights. Ended up getting down to like 78, 79, pretty shredded. Um, and then got on the scales the other day for the first time since we left. Because uh, we went on a helicopter ride to at the uh, 12 Apostles. And he goes, yep, yeah, 72 kilos. And I had a heart attack. I was like, whoa, am I sick? Like, I actually, it was a bit of a panic because that's too light. But it explains it because we're doing like 50 to 70,000 steps a week hiking. Plus, I'm doing all my push-ups. And we're not even eating that much. Like, we'd be in a calorie deficit every day, 100%. Every day we hike, we'd be in a calorie deficit. So, 72 kilos, I'm getting too skinny. But I knew that was gonna happen because I haven't lived a lifestyle this active since I was 16 years old. So, beats sitting in a truck getting fat, let me tell you that. I just gotta maybe try eat a bit more, to be honest, or try put some muscle on. I just ordered a boxing bag, you know, the suction caps that stick to the van. Or stick to a wall. I'm just going to suction cab to the wall because Alicia doesn't like holding pads. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is this? like the horn of a deer. Just walking on this beach, we, there's a campsite right up from the beach, but we're still a bit early, so we don't know if we're gonna camp here. Might have lunch in a minute with the public barbecue. So I've got a new hobby, and I'm trying to find the prettiest shells on each beach we go to. How pretty this one is. 
probably can't even hear me, it's that windy here. I'm freezing. So I found this one. I'm gonna try and make a necklace out of it. It's got a little hole. It's another one of my new hobbies that I found traveling, along with reading. I read so many books now. I've read like 11 books so far on this trip. But yeah, I'm gonna make a little necklace with the string the little tricks I use that I learned from another lady traveling. Just doing some food on these clean barbecues. Look at the view behind us, glad of you. Potatoes, some patties, onion. Keto burger. Oh. Mm. Oh. That's good. Amazing what traveling does for you. Like you've got all this time to think about things and be creative and I never had any hobbies before traveling. I don't know why, like I just all I did was work or go to the gym and like gym wasn't really a hobby for me it was more like a like a mental health physical health sort of thing and now I've got all this time like exercise has become a hobby I've learned how to make necklaces bracelets anklets I read all the time now I'm like this shell collecting thing it's incredible what traveling does for you and it like changes your life perspective I guess This is called like World's End. It's one of the furthest points edge of the world. on the edge of the world. It's called the edge of the world. Bit out of our comfort zone, but I didn't want to backtrack. So we've got an hour and 45 minute drive through the middle of nowhere to somehow make our way through to Cradle Mountain, the back way. This road's actually not too bad. I think there's like five or six campsites along the way, so we'll stop and find one for the night shortly and then cut across. I think we have to catch a ferry tomorrow morning or something and then cut across towards Cradle Mountain. Normally I wouldn't do this, but it's good to get out of your comfort zone. We are in the middle of nowhere still. I think we're slowly coming to the town we want to be at. And let's just say, after about an hour and a half of driving, I should have just backtracked. <laughs> this is hectic, you probably should not. It's, it's RV friendly, but it's not. It's not, it's not ideal. Some of the things we've had to do, is just stupid in this thing. But I'll tell you what, it's good to know Good to know that this van can do this type of shit, but hasn't been ideal. We just had to climb, it was probably like, oh, I don't know how you, you'd measure it, but it was so steep that if I had, to, if I stalled and then like rolled down and crossed up, we would have just flipped down the hill. So, Not great, but whoa, whoa! <laughs> See, <laughs> river crossings, <laughs> and I think ASR's um, traction control. So I've turned that off because before I was coming up real steep dirt hills, and um, the van was cut now. I think that's traction control. So I took that off, and now I've kind of just been drifting at the same time it's like gripping up the hill just it's not not ideal look at these mountains I would, probably wouldn't even bring me four wheel drive here if I knew about it
on boost. Oh, back to safety. <laughs> we are in the middle of absolute nowhere. And they want 40 bucks to park somewhere for the night. Fuck that. No power, nothing. So we're gonna keep driving. Have a look at the condition of the van. When I say we're in the middle of nowhere, I mean we're in the middle of nowhere. Today's been a stressful day. I don't really like doing this shit, to be honest, in the van. But, like I said, it's good to know I can do it. We're in the middle of nowhere, probably like 600 metres above sea level. A couple bars of service in this big flat roadside thing we're just gonna kick back and rest up i reckon we're still probably an hour from the closest bitchman road so we'll get there tomorrow lesson learned if apple maps tells you to backtrack to get to somewhere just do it all right it's been a stressful day like i said so we're having an early night back to full driving tomorrow we use this bucket to lift the laptop up a little bit so it's on a better angle portable Wi-Fi, and we just watch movies, YouTube, whatever. <laughs>